Hello, my loves. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome in to this video for the solar shift into Sagittarius. So first things first, if you are new, hi, welcome in. It is wonderful to have you here. What we're going to be doing is talking a little bit about astrology, and then we are going to be using our own astrology, learning about it, and then tapping into the spiritual tools of the Oracle cards to get guidance on how to best utilize our personal astrology during this season. So. If this is your first time here, you may want to go watch my tutorial video on how to get the most out of these readings. It is not necessary, but it's a tool there for you if you want to know how to engage with this material in a deeper way. For those who are not new, hello, welcome back. It is so wonderful to have you guys here. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's a pleasure for me to offer this support in this way. It brings me so much joy and I hope you guys all know how much I truly love you, care for you, and I'm excited for your journeys. If you want to support me, there's many ways you can do that. Just engage with this material. Share it with people you think it will align with. You can also comment on it and let me know what is resonating for you, what questions you have. You can also donate if you feel inspired at paypal.me slash devotedvulnerable, link is in the description. And you can go to my website, devotedandvulnerable.com slash services, link is in the description, if you want to learn more about the services that I offer. I offer card readings, I offer guided meditations, I offer a bunch of different other things, so go there and check it out if you feel called, no pressure. With all that being said, let's jump into Sagittarius season. I'm so excited to bring this energy to you guys. Sagittarius is my favorite sign. I am totally biased. I am a Sagittarian sun. I'm a, Sagitt I'm a Mercury Sagittarius. I'm a Saturn Sagittarius and I'm a Uranus Sagittarius. So I am quite Sagittarian in my astrological makeup. Don't worry if that didn't make sense to you. Basically, I have a lot of Sag energy. So let's talk about what a solar season is. A solar season is when the sun, the spotlight of our solar system, is in a particular sign. The solar season of Sagittarius will start on November 22nd when the sun moves into the sign of Sagittarius and it will last until December 21st, until the solstice, when the sun will then move into the sign of Capricorn. So during this solar month, and I will refer to this as the month as we go through these readings. So please understand when I say this month, I do mean solar month, November 22nd to December 21st. We're going to be focusing on the Sagittarian energy, the Sagittarian archetype. So your readings are going to be based on where Sagittarius shows up for you in your chart. Essentially what planets, the sun, the moon, and or your rising sign exist in the sign of Sagittarius. Now, if you do not know what planets and aspects you have in the sign of Sagittarius, do not worry. This is part of what we do here in these readings. We learn about our astrology. To get caught up with your own astrology, to get access to your own chart, to know how to read it and find out what planets are in this sign, watch my tutorial video. I have this tutorial video created for how to find your birth chart information on astro.com. It, link is popping up here and it is also in the description if you want to go and enter in your birth data to that site. And you do need to know your birth time in order to access this information. So go ahead and watch my how to find, how to find your birth time tutorial to get caught up on how to find your birth time so that you have something to work with with the chart generator. So we're going to be spotlighting the sign of Sagittarius by finding out what planet, the sun, the moon, and or the rising sign is in Sagittarius. You will watch the readings and the explanations for every single planet that you have in Sagittarius. So for example, I mentioned that my sun's in Sagittarius, so is my Mercury, so is my Saturn, and so is my Uranus. So technically I have four readings this month because I have four planets in the sign of Sagittarius. I know that might be a lot of information for you, but this is when the sun, the spotlight of our galaxy is really highlighting these elements and aspects of your life. So it's really fun to dive into how this is showing up in your life, how this archetype may be expressing itself through you, through the planets. I'll describe in each video 
what the planet in the sign of Sagittarius really means before I dive into the reading and the advice. If you do not have your sun, the moon, your rising sign, or any of the planets in the sign of Sagittarius, there's a video for you called Background Sagittarius. I'll explain in that video what that means, but you can watch that video if you don't have any of those aspects. So a little bit more about Sagittarius. You want to look at your Sagittarian suns for this entire month as well. Watch how they shine. Watch how they act during this time. So anyone with a birthday between November 22nd and December 21st, I call it spying on the solar sign, so that you can really learn more about this energy. The Sagittarian archetype is the archetype of the archer. And the archer has this bow and arrow that it's aiming. And what is it aiming at? It's aiming at anything it wants to, but the thing that Sagittarius loves to aim at the most is truth. We love to aim at truth. Truth is one of our favorite things to aim at. It is essentially the energy of this archer and or centaur. So we can be adventurous. The Sagittarian sign is adventurous, congenial, which means likable, dreamy, very, very idealistic, very, very focused on what it is that we are wanting in our lives. We are optimistic. We're always looking at the positive side of things and we are intellectual. So I say we because yes, I am in the Sagittarian archetype, but this is going to show up somewhere in your life as well. So it refers to you as well, no matter where it shows up in your chart. So the modality of the Sagittarius, meaning the way that this energy expresses, is through the modality of what's called mutable. You see the little arch with the dot underneath it up there. And that's the symbol for mutable. Mutable signs are always the signs that happen during a change in seasons. So in the Northern Hemisphere, Sagittarius happens between the change from fall to winter. It's not quite winter yet, and fall's kind of wrapping down, winding down. And so the energy of the Sagittarius is very changeable, mutable, very adaptable. It's constantly shifting. The element of the Sagittarius is fire. It's represented here by the triangle. The triangle is the flame going up towards the sky. And so the element of fire represents the spiritual world, the spiritual realm. So when we put those two together, we have this changing spirituality. That is a lot of the essence of the Sagittarian archetype. Not only are we focused on truth, you have to be a seeker of knowledge in order to gain this truth. Through adventure and experience, we learn in our lives. And so it's this ever-changing spiritual nature of the Sagittarian archetype that we're going to be exploring and spotlighting for this entire solar month. I created a little explanation page here for you guys to show you a few different elements of the Sagittarian archetype. So you see here the symbol represented by the arrow. Next to it, we have, of course, the archetype, the archer. The planet that rules Sagittarius is the planet of Jupiter. Jupiter is all about expansion. It's all about luck. It's all about making things big and bright and energy. So the Jupiter energy is this amazing hugeness in our galaxy, in the story of the Zodiac. And so it rules the Sagittarian sign because they're so very similar in their energies. The key word for Sagittarius is idealize. I would also say that the key word is truth. You can see here the constellation of Sagittarius. And again, we have the element of fire represented by the triangle, the modality of mutable, that changeable energy represented by the half circle and the dot, and the house of Sagittarius. So each zodiac sign represents or rules a house. So they go in the order of the zodiac story. So Aries is the first sign in the zodiac story, so it represents the first house. Sagittarius is the ninth sign in the zodiac story, so it rules and represents the ninth house. You can think of the planet 
as the what of your zodiac story, the sign as the how, how that what expresses, and the house as the where. So the where of the ninth house is very Sagittarian in energy. It is all about learning, travel, adventure, spirituality. It can deal with mental health. It can deal with higher learning. That is where the energy of the ninth house represents and shows up in our lives. Now more about the houses will come through in my moon readings. The new one in Sagittarius happens a day after this solar shift. So after you watch these videos, you definitely are going to want to watch the new moon in Sagittarius video where we are going to be focusing on the house energies where this new moon is showing up for us in our lives and the advice that's coming through for the lunar phase of Sagittarius, which is going to start one day after the solar phase. All right. So for this reading, we are going to be consulting the Isis Oracle by Alana Fairchild. And if readings aren't your thing, please feel free just to watch the explanation of your energy and let yourself play with how that expresses throughout your solar month. But we can also use the cards to get more insight in how to really capitalize on this energy. The Isis Oracle wanted us to focus on freedom this solar phase. So freedom is a huge theme of the Sagittarian archetype. I haven't really talked about it yet, but it deals with this expansion. In order to be free, you have to be able to expand. In order to expand, you have to be able to be free. If you're confined, you're not able to expand and you're not free. So we're going to focus on how to get ourselves to open up to a more free way of living. That is what the Isis Oracle really wants to bring to us for this solar season of Sagittarius. So in order to focus on this freedom, the Isis Oracle is going to bring us this little poem, this little affirmation to say throughout our solar phase to really activate within us this free expression that we are looking to embody during the Sagittarian season. This is a very, very powerful deck, and I am excited to share the medicine, the power, and the beauty, and the wisdom that this deck has to offer. We have covered everything that we're going to cover here in this explanation video, and we're going to dive into our individual readings. So this reading is for you. If the sign of Sagittarius is void or empty of any of the planets, the sun, the moon, or the rising sign, meaning you have no planets in Sagittarius, the sun, the moon, and your ascending sign are not in Sagittarius either. I call this background in Sagittarius energy because if we look at the night sky when we were born, aka our chart, we notice that Sagittarius was still in the sky when we were born even though we might not have a major factor, a major player in this part of the sky, that doesn't mean that it wasn't present, that its energy wasn't there when we were born. It just means its influence is a little bit less. So if we think of it like a play, all the characters in the play are represented by the planets. The sun, the moon, and the rising sign are all on the stage. But the backdrop is Sagittarius. It's still there. It's still influencing how things play out, but it's not a major component of the story. Now, also something to note here, just because none of the planets, the sun, moon, and rising are in Sagittarius doesn't mean that you don't have other things about Sagittarius that show up as influential in your chart. Your MC, your midheaven could be in Sagittarius. The asteroid of of Chiron could be in Sagittarius. You could have your North or South node in Sagittarius. There could be other Sagittarius aspects in your chart that I'm not going to cover here. If I try to cover all of them, there would be way too many readings and it'd be way too much work. So I break it down to the planets, the sun, moon, and rising. But you may still have another influence in the Sagittarius energy of your chart, regardless of the way that I break it down, okay? But this advice will still be valid for you. 
Another thing is, as I was talking about in the introduction, the ninth house is where the Sagittarius energy shows up in our chart. The planets are how, but the um, houses are where. So wherever you have the ninth house, if you have any planets in the ninth house, you could consider those planets in Sagittarius because it's in the Sagittarian house, okay? But again, this reading will still be valid for you because I'm setting the intention that anyone who doesn't have the planet, sun, moon, or rising in the sign of Sagittarius receive guidance through the Isis Oracle with this reading. And I just wanted to give you a little bit on understanding. So on the backdrop, in the background energy of your life in general, you feel adventurous on all levels. Congenial, idealistic, optimistic, and intellectual is kind of a background frequency and vibration that influences your life, but not strongly in any one way. Okay? Let me know if you have questions about that. This is, again, it's just how I interpret this energy. And it gives us a framework and an understanding for which aspects of our life are more prominent than others. But again, there may be another influence in your chart that is Sagittarius in nature, even though we aren't focusing on it here. Let's see what the Isis Oracle has to share with you. If you haven't already taken a few deep breaths, call in your spiritual support team and opened your heart to receive the guidance that's most aligned for you, I invite you to do that at this time. So let's see, my beautiful background Sagittarians, what is your path to freedom this solar phase? Ooh. You got the dark mysteries. Enter the chamber of the dark goddess. Beautiful. Sorry. The dark goddess calls to you. The dark goddess calls you to her inner chamber where she holds a test and a gift for you. The test is your willingness to meet and release the fears within you that have secretly been holding you back. The gift is freedom, peace, authority, and prosperity in all its forms. Will you accept her call? Your time for deeper initiation is here. Background in Sagittarius, you are not getting away <laughs> easy on this Sagittarian journey. You are being called into a deep, beautiful, amazing freedom from, what does she say? To meet and release the fears that have been secretly holding you back in order for you to attain freedom, prosperity, opportunity, and peace. Okay. So you have to be willing for this awareness to come. So if you're not willing, that's okay. You can wait for another time when this is aligned, but this is a very great time for you to just dive into this. So I encourage you, please let go of what is holding you back. Step into your freedom, step into your peace, step into your opportunity and prosperity. We all need you to do this work. We're all doing different work in different ways. This is how you can best do this by surrendering up what no longer serves you and allowing yourself to be guided through the unknown, the darkness, that's what the dark mysteries represent, the unknown, into this new energy of light. Remember, Sagittarius is focusing on truth. You have a background focus on truth. You, my friend, are being invited into a deeper truth within yourself to meet and then let go of the fears that are holding you back. And this is going to be unveiled to you over the course of this solar phase. It's gonna be facilitated by this affirmation that I'm gonna share with you. So repeat this three times every time you repeat it. I would recommend the morning and at night. You definitely want to write it down on an index card, in a journal, some post-it note, somewhere where you can see it and repeat it. Okay, so just pause the video if you need to write this down. Use captions on YouTube if that helps. Sublime Isis, dark and sweet. Through you, my hidden self, I meet. 
I honor this self and accept no longer do I fear shame or reject you gift me with myself complete sublime Isis dark and sweet so saying this affirmation over and over again will help bring this awareness into your life you're going to see things unfolding in your life that help you to recognize that this is what this card is talking about that this is what she is guiding you into releasing so that you can attain that freedom that peace that opportunity that prosperity so i'm here to support you in this this is really an individual journey this is going to unfold in your life in amazing ways i remember at the beginning at the shift from 2019 to 2020 I had said that I was going to leave everything holding me back behind in the last decade behind, and I meant it. And what it felt like the universe did to me at the beginning month of that year was it felt like it just turned over a suitcase of all the things I was trying to bring with me that were holding me back. And I had to one by one go through each of these things. And it wasn't like it actually happened to me. Like it wasn't like I had a dream and a vision of the suitcase and went through each thing. But I felt energetically like that's what was happening. Like I felt the universe bringing up to me all of these things and I was able to see them clearly um, and know that it was because of this affirmation that I had set, this intention that I had set to let these things go, that the universe was bringing them to me to really look at and deal with and release. And so this is kind of how this will play out for you. It won't be literal, uh, but it will be, you will be able to see it through the situations that are presenting themselves in your life over the next 28, 30 days from November 22nd to December 20, 21st to the solstice. Yeah. Powerful, powerful. I'm so excited for you, for your freedom, for your peace, for your opportunities and your prosperities. Thank you so much for doing the work to let go of what is no longer serving you to seek your freedom and to face those fears and to meet them, love them and release them with the help of this goddess, with the help of your spiritual support team. Remember, you can call on your spiritual support team, whomever they are. You don't always have to call on Isis. You can insert their name in this poem, this affirmation, if you feel more aligned with that. And reach out to me if you have questions. Reach out to me and let me know how this is playing out for you. And know that I'm here with you. I love you. I'm supporting you. And you're awesome. You got this. As always, namaste. The universal light within me salutes and honors the universal light within you. Namaste.